Um, I'm Jill with Go English Coach. Now we are starting our Advanced Grammar 1 class. This is uh, Advanced Grammar 1. Okay, it is the first class of eight. So hopefully you are here to really jump in and dive in and get going with your English. Um, I'd love to help you with that. So I just finished the intermediate grammar one class. So if you wanted to start a little bit before where we are starting here today, um, go ahead and watch that video. You can access all of our videos from the calendar. You just click on it and then you can watch the past classes as well. So that's a really great feature, I think, for teaching and learning English. Okay, so welcome everybody, Advanced Grammar One, Class One. We will have eight of these in the month of May, okay? Today we are, I always put here my little plan for the day. We're going to review the grammar presentation for the simple present and present progressive tenses. Now, if you are an advanced English learner, you have likely done a lot of this work already. Um, and the great part about it is that we're going to just dive a little bit deeper in this class today and talk a little bit about um, usage um, between the simple and the present progressive tenses. Then we're going to talk about these non-action verbs. So there are some verbs in English that we do not typically use the ing form with, or if we do, the point is that it really doesn't change the meaning um, when you compare the ing form to the present tense, okay? So we'll talk about and look at a list of those verbs. We're gonna look at the spelling and pronunciation. Um, spelling and pronunciation is a really important thing in um, English. And the, the reason is, is that English is not a phonetic, uh, um, English is not a phonetic language, right? And what does that mean? That means that very often or often enough, the letters and the sounds are not always the same. So for example, you may have the letter O in the word hot, for example, or college. And the sound that you hear, hot, is an ah sound, right? But it's spelled H-O-T. So my point here, you know, I've had students say hot, hot, right? And that's not that's not how we say it in Amer American English. Um, not a big problem, but I think that, you know, if you're learning the language, you really want to know the pronunciation. So the fact that, um, the fact that English is not um, a phonetic, language makes it difficult. And I will tell you um, from years in working in classrooms in the United States and teaching English to English language learners, um, students in even native speakers spend a lot of time practicing and learning spelling. And it's for this very same reason, right? So, you know, this word, you know, can or this one, these words cause a lot of problems um, for language learners, right? This, this is the past tense to think, right? So this ah, ought, the pronunciation of this can be really tricky. And then, you know, you compare it to something that looks very similar through, and it's got ooh, and this is ah. So spelling, and pronunciation are two things that I really encourage English language learners to focus on. Um, I am offering a pronunciation course. Um, it's pronunciation and fluency level one. And that is Mondays and Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. So go ahead and look at our calendar and kind of, you can always add it to your calendar so you can remember. And then if you're not able to make it that time, like I said, you can go back and look at the calendar to try and um, make it fit in your schedule and then or watch it in the past. So you maybe have to work during the day, no problem. You know, just come home and watch the lesson from that day. And each lesson builds on each other. So lesson one or lesson two 
references the work we did in lesson one. So going in order, you know, is really important too. If you don't have to, if you have a specific thing that, you know, you really want to practice and I talked about it in lesson six, go ahead and just watch lesson six, okay? So practicing spelling and pronunciation of these tenses um, is important, okay? Um, and then finally, we're going to do a little bit of practice and hopefully we can get through all of that stuff in this class today. So let's, so I do move fairly quickly in these classes, especially when there's no live students with me. So then, so then you can watch on your own and go ahead and just pause and stop and rewind and kind of, um, go at your own pace with the class. Okay. So here's a, because you are advanced students or hopefully you are advanced students, I'm talking about a C1 or C2 student. And this, I'll show you guys here. Um, and the C1 and C2 are, it's the, uh, what are they called? The common European framework. And I reference that here and there. It's, you know, it's not a big deal if you don't know where you are at, but you know, you just want to be able to understand what level and what you should know at that level. So that framework, the A1, A2, you know, all of those is really nice to know kind of where you're at. And then you can say, okay, I know I want to be at C2 in two years or something like that. Um, so I always really recommend you can, there's online tests that you can do that are free. Um, and I can put a link in our app or on our site too. Actually, it is linked on our um, our home page. So goenglishcoach.com. Um, last, before we jump in here, is this is the book that I like to use. Um, I don't get paid or anything from <laughs> Pearson, but these, I've, I've worked in a lot of schools and taught adults for many years, so, um, and kids, but I really like how these books lay out the grammar and then provide some really good, good like um, practice to exercise and um, and use the, the 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 grammar that you're learning. Okay, so okay, so I've got here just the general overview of how we form the simple present. Okay, um, and. I've mentioned this in the, in the intermediate class before, but I really like to use um, kind of like a formula for this stuff. So for example, we've got subject, this is a very simple tense. You've got the subject, which is they, then you've got verb, and then you've got the remainder of the sentence, right? So one thing that is important to remember in um, the English language is that we are what we call an SVO language. So what does SVO? And, and this is, a we're pretty strict about this. And what does that mean? So SVO stands for subject, verb, object. Okay, so that's the order that the majority of our sentences use. The subject, next verb and then the object so let's just do a quick discussion about that um let's see here so uh she likes cats okay very simple sentence but i just want to be able to show my point here she likes cats okay so this is your subject right then we have the verb and what is it that she likes? That's the object, subject, verb, object. She likes cats, okay? So this is the order that um, most of our, our, our sentences go in. Um, other languages, for example, in Spanish, um, you guys will hear me reference um, Spanish. I've studied Spanish for many years. I still can't speak it very well, um, but I try. Um, anyways, I, in Spanish, you can move the object and the verb around a little bit more. Um, however, in English, we do not do that. Okay. Um, so you, for example, you would never say cats she likes, but in Spanish, that's okay. Okay. So, or it's, you know, maybe not as common, but you can do it and it's grammatically correct. In English, it's not. So 
So keep that in mind. We, I will reference this for you many other times going forward in the future. Um, so a subject, verb, object, and we can look, we will look at, you know, more complex um, forms of this. Um, so let's just, we'll leave that there for now. Keep that in your mind though, SVO, okay? Okay, so they live in Texas. So subject, verb, and then the rest of the sentence. There's not necessarily an object here. She always drives to work. So keep in mind when we use the present tense, right? We use present tense when we're talking about something that happens regularly. Um, and I mentioned this in the intermediate grammar class, but um, we use in English, um, we use the simple present really only to discuss things that we do regularly, like my car is black, I drive a black car. So that's the present tense. Um, my dog eats ice cream, right? Um, that's something that happens regularly. Um, I wake up at 7 a.m. I do that every day, okay? Does that make sense? We don't use the present tense in English to talk about something that is happening now. Okay, when we're talking about something that is happening now, we're going to use present progressive. Okay, so this is a nice indicator that you're talking about present tense. She always drives to work. Okay, so these two are positive, the affirmative examples. They live in Texas. She always drives to work. Now, if we change these to negative, we've got they don't live in Texas, right? They don't live in Texas. She doesn't always drive to work. She doesn't. So remember the third person uses does. Keep in mind and listen for that pronunciation of that. Doesn't, it's not doesn't, okay, doesn't. Okay. And then when we use the simple present in a question, okay, do they live in Texas? Does she always drive to work? We're gonna use the do, so we change the formula, right? Here's the original formula. And then what happens with the formula here? So, um, so if we write this out, they don't or do not, right? So for the negative, we use the subject, the do, auxiliary plus the verb oops i can't spell here okay um and so that's your formula here for the negative and then when we switch it and we make the question um we're going to use we're going to switch this we're going to put the do or does first plus then the subject, okay, plus your verb, your main verb. So we call this an auxiliary verb. It is a verb, but it's called an auxiliary verb. Just kind of keep that in your mind. You know, when you're adults and you learn a language, you really, I know it's really important for adults to learn um, the sections and what things are called. Um, of course, when we learn our native language, you know, we learn by listening and then responding in this, this, a different process. So, you know, learning English as an adult, it's a little bit more formulaic, um, you know, using formulas and this is how it's done and rules. Um, so, so just keep that in mind, you know, we, you learn your first language differently than you learn your second or third or whatever language English is to you, you know, and then you're kind of always taking that language and filtering it through your native language. And so that's where people have um, uh, friction, I guess you could say, or um, interference is what we say from the teaching part of things. So, um, okay, so here's your formula. It's an auxiliary verb, the do does, the subject plus the verb, okay? And then your answer, yes, they do, or no, she doesn't. 
And finally, how to form WH questions. So think of questions that start with WH, who, what, where, when, why, okay? Where do they live? Why does she drive, okay? So those are some different kinds of questions. These are yes, no questions that where the answer is either yes or no. And then you have WH questions. Okay, so that's just a very fast overview of um, simple present, okay? So when we are discussing now, let's see, um, I was gonna do non-action. Yeah, let's do this. One thing to talk about that I think people often make um, mistakes with when um, writing or speaking it, using the present tense is the pronunciation of the endings for the present tense. So we've got a couple of different rules, okay? So for the present tense, for example, how do we form the third person, right? So again, I think I've showed you guys this. This is the, the grammar book um, that I'm using. And so Very easy, right? The only way that we really ever change, um, I live, you live, this is again, just simple present tense. Let's do this. In the third, we've got he, she, it. We're gonna say lives, okay? We live and then they live. So as you can see, very easy. They None of them change except this third person, and then we add the S. Okay. Now, what I wanted to show you guys is the pronunciation of this S sometimes is an S sound, and sometimes it is a Z sound. So in this example, lives. What are you hearing? Lives. It's a Z sound, okay? So this one has a Z. When we talk about once, what do you guys hear there, once? It's an S sound, okay? So when I use these little lines, if you guys have not been to one of my pronunciation and fluency classes before, we use these lines to talk about the pronunciation, okay? So that is how something is spelled. Excuse me, it's how something is pronounced. So we spell it like this and we pronounce it with a Z sound, okay? So that's what the lines indicate is the sound, okay? The pronunciation of it. So here, the pronunciation of that final S sound is an S, once, once. Now, you're probably asking, well, how do I know, teacher, if um, I have to pronounce the final S sound with a Z or an S? Great question. So. It will probably come to you naturally because it's a natural evolution of how the sounds come together. But the, the way, if you're having a problem um, deciding if it's lives or lifts, it, it, that would make a difference in somebody understanding you. If you're gonna say lives, it's a totally different word, lives. Okay, so here's how you know. The difference is you're gonna look at this sound, okay? And this sound here. So if we look at, let's let's write this word once in, in using the international phonetic alphabet. Wa. Actually, very easy. It doesn't change very much. For lives, it's going to be i. Lives. Okay, that's how you write those words um, using the international phonetic alphabet. So you can see, so what we're looking at is the sound has to match. So the T sound, if you put your hand here on your throat, okay? And we're gonna use, we're gonna say the sound t, t, t. You don't have any feeling here. There's no vibration, t, t. It's just air coming out, it's not vibration. So that is, then we have to, and, and the same is with the S sound. So, t, t, t. 
And then we have s. There's no vibration here. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to, that's what we call voiced lists. Voice, not voiced lists, voice lists. Okay. Voiceless. So T. T is voiceless and S is vo voiceless. So they are both voiceless, okay? In comparison, a V, if you say the sound v, 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 you can feel vibration here. Live, v. You really have to kind of accentuate or exaggerate the sound to feel the vibration. Lives, live, kind of tickles your lips. <laughs> So V is voiced. So when you have the vibration here, it means it's voiced. So there's vibration and um, kind of like a buzzing in your throat. So, and also the same with the Z sound. Z, Z, okay. So what we're doing is we're gonna, if something is voiceless, so if the sound before the S, this is the rule, okay. If the sound before the final S is voiceless, you're gonna use S. If the sound before the S, well, she, no, we don't use that. We're gonna say she. <laughs> if the sound before the S here is voiced, you're gonna use a Z sound, okay? Um, so, and this happens also with the ED sounds, and we'll talk about that when we get to past tense. But um, so, so keep that in mind, okay? The spelling and the pronunciation of these. So the spelling is the same, lives, just has an S at the end. Wants, we just write S. But the pronunciation of that final S sound is just a little bit different. S and Z. Okay, and we're gonna match it based on the sound there. So let's do a couple of these together. Okay, let's do, let's see. Um, needs. Uh, draws. Ooh, here's a good one. So, so we have, these are the ending sounds. And we've actually got one more. So we just talked about these two and they're, but they're total, there are three. Um, let's see, I'm gonna give a couple more here and we're gonna choose from these three for here. One, two, three, let's see. Um, right. And why can't I think of it? Let's, uh, let's see. Stands. How about that? Okay. All right, you guys. Let's take a look. Um, so we've got z, s, and is. So we haven't talked about this one yet, and you'll see. I bet you guys can guess which one it is and which one it goes to. Um, so. The final sound on this, so we're gonna write what the final sound is. So the word is needs, needs, z. What's that final sound you guys hear there? Needs, exactly, it's a z. Awesome, okay, because this is voiced. It's a voiced sound, d, d, d. D is a, is a voiced sound. And so then this is the voiced version. Okay. All right. Great work. Okay. Draws, draws. You can feel the Z there, but you think to yourself, but teacher, this is a, it's a vowel sound, right? It's the same if we have try, you know, and then it goes to tries, right? Tries. That is also a Z sound because Vowels are voiced. Ah, uh, e, o. All vowels are voiced. Okay, impossible to not have one that is vo is voiceless. Got it. Okay, fixes. So this one is different. We haven't talked about this ending yet. Fixes, and 
So it's this I Z sound. So we, you can't just have the sound X. You have to have a sound between the X and the S, just a small little sound. So fixes. So this is the third um, pronunciation that we have for a final S. And then you'll also notice the spelling. So we're talking about spelling and pronunciation. When you have X at the end, you're gonna have an ES instead of just S. So we never write this as a word. This is not a word in English, okay? It's fixes. And you're probably wondering if you haven't studied this for a while, there are a couple of different ones like this. Let's see, um, things that end with, let's see, S H C H X um, Z. And let's see, what are my other ones here? S H Oh, and S. Yeah. So when we have that third person, we need the E S at the end when the word ends with S H C H X Z or S. Okay. So, um, if you have the word watch, That goes to watches. Okay, he watches TV every day. Okay, and the pronunciation is this I Z. Okay, he um, fixes the B buzzes. Um, let's see, and it, remember, it's the sound. Okay, so. Okay, uh, let's continue here. So we're choosing from these three pronunciations for the final S sound. So writes, writes, no, no vibration there. So we're gonna put S, writes, all right? And then stands, can you guys even read that? Stands, so um, stands, Z. we have that same sound with a Z, okay? Okay, hopefully this is a nice just review for you guys and you've already studied all of this. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see, what else? Let's do a quick discussion of non-action verbs. So, um, oh, one more thing I wanted to say to you. So we've got the final S sounds. We discussed watch and watches. So when you've got S H C H X Z or S, you're going to add E S. Okay. And then one other thing before we start is this like for this example, right? When we've got, let's take this away here. When you have a word that hopefully everybody remembers this, um, here's cry or try. The third person, right, he, she, or it, it changes from a Y to I-E-S, okay? So cry goes to cries, try goes to tries, I-E-S. Okay, then another, another example, how about study? And we're gonna say she studies. Now keep in mind that's an S, tries z cries and that's because these are vowel sounds so the sound before the final s is a vowel and a vowel is always voiced okay so you can always check if a sound is voiced or voiceless by pronouncing it and feeling here um, otherwise you can get lists of sounds that are voiced versus voiceless in english and try to practice those um, I would imagine that most of this comes very just naturally because it's really difficult to have a voiceless sound next to a voiced sound, which is why the matching is even a thing. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, great. So um, I would like to take another couple of minutes to discuss the non-action verbs. So again, a non-action verb is 
I'm going to switch you guys over here to my desk here. Um, and then we can look at this list together. Okay, so non-action verbs are, here's a nice list here. So a non-action verb, again, is a verb that does not get used in the, um, they're not used in the progressive tense. So you don't, for example, say, um, I am agreeing with you, you know, you can say that, um, but it just doesn't change the meaning of to saying, I agree with you, or I am agreeing with you. It's not a difference in meaning there. So the categories of things that we um, that are non-action verbs are typically emotions like love, care, trust. Those are things that we typically just use in the present tense, okay? So let's get that here. So these are ones that are used only in present tense. Again, you will hear people say, I I am adoring it. It's a little more colloquial or kind of informal. Um, I, You'll hear a lot of people, for example, say, I am wondering about something. But so the point is, I am wondering does not have a different meaning than I wonder. Okay. So. Uh, so emotions, mental states, wants and preferences. So we don't really say I am preferring, I am wanting. People do say this, I am wishing. Uh, it's just that the difference, the meaning doesn't change, okay? Senses and perceptions. So things like feel, hear, notice, observe, perceive, see, smell, sound, taste. Appearance and value it appears that there is no difference between morning and night. I don't know. <laughs> um, or a possession and a relationship. So instead of really like focusing on these categories, you guys, I would really just kind of focus on the types of words and noticing how those are used and not used. So I own a home. Um, these shoes belong to me. Um, I represent my clients, right? So, um, so, so take a look at that and let's see if we can practice this a little bit. Um, actually what I'd like to do, so we're going to end the class here in a couple of minutes, but what I would like for you to do is, um, Take a look at this here, okay? So I'm gonna see if I can get this a little bit higher up. There we go. Okay, so if we're practicing the simple and the present progressive, and we'll we'll go over a little bit more of the present progressive in our class on Thursday, but Take some time and read this set paragraph. So if you need to pause it, pause it. And then you can fill in the correct versions of the verb. So here it says, complete the conversations and use the correct form of the verbs in parentheses, the simple present um, and the present progressive. So the, the top exercise here says, let's just do this one, actually. You guys do this one. And then in class on Thursday, we will do this part together. Okay, so take a minute, you guys. I'm gonna make a little better. So it says to circle the simple present verbs and underline the present progressive. So circling, are you living? And underlining, so we're underlining the present progressive and we're um, circling the present, okay? Are you living is present progressive. So there's a line here or working, okay? 
Do you worry? That's present. So we're going there about making a mistake with someone's name or title. You are right to be concerned. This is, that's just simple present. Naming systems vary a lot from culture to culture and people tend to have very strong feelings about their names. So this here is not a verb, naming systems. This is the subject, okay? Well, now help is available. That's present tense in the form of an interest. They're really trying to trick you here. They're using ing words, but this is an adjective. And practical book by Terry Morrison. Kiss, bow, or shake hands. How do business in six? How to do business in sixty countries gives. Okay, I'm gonna stop there because I want you guys to do the rest. Okay. Well, let's wrap for today, you guys. Um, great job on getting started with this grammar class. Um, the next class, so this class will be Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11 a.m. And again, I record all of my lessons so you're able to watch them after or later in the day or the next day or whenever you have time. So very happy for you guys to be here. Um, and if you can join the live classes, it's great. Then we have a more interactive and very fun discussion. And I can really help you guys to address your concerns. So have a great day and I'll see you all very soon. All right, welcome back everybody. Jill here, your English teacher. Um, I've got gla uh, class two of our advanced grammar class. Um, we're getting started a little bit late today, but um, lots of moving pieces and I've got a great class planned here for you guys. Um, <clears throat> let's see, so uh, in our class on Tuesday, we went kind of really deep into the present tense um, we talked a little bit about the differences in um, English versus other languages and how um, English doesn't use the present tense as often. We use present uh, progressive or present continuous, some people refer to it as, more often. We also talked about the pronunciation of the final S sound in the present tense. We discussed having three ways to pronounce um, the final S. Uh, we looked at voiced and voiceless sounds. So if you missed that class, go ahead and um, go back to that. So it would have just been Tuesday's uh, advanced grammar class, class one. Um, and let's see, what else did we talk about? I think that's pretty much it. We did a little bit of practice together and looking at um, like I said, the spelling changes and then the pronunciation of those sounds. So today we're going to do another deep dive, um, go a little deeper than we do in our intermediate grammar class. And we're going to talk about the present progressive form. Um, so this one, again, is the form that I believe um, in, in, in American English, uh, we use this form more often. Um, especially and more specifically when we're talking about something that is happening right now. Okay. So uh, as I've told you, I really like to use um, formulas. So I wrote this out here for us. This is the general formula for creating a sentence using um, the present progressive tense. So as we also talked about in class, um, that English is an SV. O language. So for those of you who are not familiar with what that means, um, it is generally the structure of a sentence in English. So there are other languages that are OVS, OSV, different kind of configurations. Uh, but English is, in fact, an SVO language. So um, let's get started with this. Um, this just means that the order is you know, we start with subject, then we have the verb, and then typically there's an object. There's sometimes and oftentimes things that are in, in between there. Um, but generally, th that's the order. And with English, it's fairly strict, okay? Meaning you don't usually, you, you don't 
unless it's like poetry or some figurative language, you know, we really don't move that structure around too much. Um, okay, so let's see. So in general, we've got our subjects always. Um, I, you, we've got he, she, and it, that's that third person, okay? So I'll just kind of keep them together and pay attention to that. And then we've got the the plural with I included and then plural from the third person, okay? I, you, he, she. So those are our subjects. Then we're going to add the forms of the verb to be. And if you're an advanced student, so at the C1, C2 level, of course, you guys probably know this, but let's just do a quick review so that we're all on the same page if you have not been here. And, you know, learning is always just a process of learning something, going back and remembering. Um, as I talked about in the class on Tuesday, you know, I think what often happens is some of the mistakes that I hear from my students is that they forget this next part. So they'll say, I walking or I needing. Okay. So we'll talk about that too. Um, uh, I'm going to put that over here. So the non action verbs. I believe we talked about that in the other class, but I don't fully remember. So we'll just look at those quickly. Um, okay. So the forms of to be in the present tense, so it's present tense, we're using am, are, is, are, and are, okay? I am, you are, he is, she is, it is, um, we are, and then they are, okay? Um, and then you've got your main verb, okay? So let's say walk um speak um share um i'm going to just start using some words that maybe we don't know so we can kind of practice new vocabulary and um okay so then we can also talk about some of the other rules here okay so these are things that, of course, with present progressive, we're talking about right now. Um, so if I say I am walk, and then, oh, what are we forgetting? We've got the I and G plus I and G. That's the other part. So this is the main verb, okay? And then we're going to add I and G. Now, with some of these, we've got some different rules, okay? And we'll take a look at those. So I am simply we're just going to add ing i am walking okay i am walking right now maybe you're on the phone and you're talking to a friend and you say i am walking okay speaking speaking now this one gets a little bit different Ooh, excuse me um you have the word share and one of the rules is that when you have the e at the end we change the spelling. We drop that and we the ing form becomes sharing. Okay, sharing. Uh, and the same thing happens here. Exhale is exhaling. What does that mean? Inhale, exhale. Okay. It's a part, it's the ex, it's the out part of your breath. All right. And then the same here, undertaking. Undertaking. You have to look look up that word. What does undertake mean? All right. Okay. So super simple. Um, the other thing that I would like to talk about with this form that we didn't really talk about in the last class is the adverbs of frequency. Um, if you want to use words like always, sometimes, um, never. Okay, um, where we need to talk about where that can go. So those are just adverbs of frequency that give you a little bit more information and description when you're talking, right? So, so 
So even though I told you here that the SVO is pretty strict, meaning we don't really move things around a lot, when you've got these additional words, you can kind of put them in here or here. You could say always they are undertaking or they always are undertaking or they are always undertaking. I would say it's most common to happen here or here for these words, okay? But it can go in the beginning, here, here, or at the end, okay? Um, and then keep in mind that these sentences are not necessarily complete. You, you are speaking is fine, but most of the time there's something at the end of the sentence. Um, so we also have this thing where you've got... Um, You've got verbs that require a direct object. So if I say you are doing, okay, you need something else here. You don't just say you are doing. You have to say you are doing it or you are doing something or you are doing that, okay? So you need something here. You are doing something, okay? We can talk about that. In a, in, a, in a next class here, I'm going to put that here. So we know a little bit about the adverbs of frequency. Again, this is advanced grammar, so we move pretty quickly in this class because I assume that you've done a lot of this work already. Um, so let's see. Um, so let's look at these rules that I've discussed here. We started to talk about it here. So in general, the first rule is that the um, ing form is just simply the verb, the main verb plus ing. Okay, so for example, walk goes to walking. Okay, that's your general rule. Okay, we'll put a little star on this for number one here. Next, there's some exceptions, right? So we talked about this one where you've got an E, a silent E. Most E's at the end of English words are silent. Um, so um, you've got share goes to, um, so we'll do share plus I-N-G. We cross out that E and we have sharing. So the rule is if, Let's say if the if main verb ends with silent e, drop the e and add ing. Okay, got it. That's my rule. The second rule. Okay. This next one, I think it's a little tricky because people always forget it. <laughs> okay, so here's an example, hit. The main verb is hit. We wanna make this um, ing, but we have to add something here, okay? So the, what, the correct form of hit in the progressive tense is hitting. So what happened there? I doubled that final T. So the rule is if the, we're going to say MV, which just means main verb, it, uh, ends with, many times in English we just do with, CVC. What does CVC mean? Okay. CVC is a consonant, vowel, consonant. So H is a consonant, I is a vowel, and then of course T is a consonant, okay? Consonant, vowel, consonant, we can simply just say CVC, okay? So if the main verb ends with CVC, you're going to, you must, double the final C, okay? So that's your rule here. So other examples that we could 
do for this one are let's see we've got hit and hitting let's see um what did we say in how about that in goes to pinning uh that's just one example how about this is another one how about spin so this is not this is not uh, it's consonant consonant vowel consonant but the rule is if the the main verb ends with cvc so this is cvc the p i n even though you have this s here it still ends with cvc so you can use or you will use um this um form okay um i had another good one in my head now oh um spin how about this one oops that is getting messy plan that's another one that is a similar to this one where it's got two consonants and then a vowel and a consonant um so you can still but it still ends with cvc so you're going to do planning okay that's the rule for that okay now i have an exception to that rule i know english has so many crazy things so so many of my students have always said teacher why is english so crazy and i i have some answers for that and the rest of it i just go i have no idea <laughs> Okay, so the final exception to this rule is that we have, um, even if it's CVC, um, let's see, I want to see how they said it in this book because they said it so much. No, I'm not even going to look. Okay, so if the CVC word, so for example, here's my main verb, okay, fix, and when I add ing, guess what? Even though it's a C V C, I'm not going to double that. So it's going to be in its final progressive state, just fixing with one X. Okay. Um, I can't explain that, but <laughs> the so the rule here is um, if the C V C form or let's say word, how about that, word um, ends with X, W, or Y, do not double the final consonant. Okay, so the fixing, uh, let's see. Let's do some. So we've got fixing. That's easy. We've done that already. How about sew? Goes to sewing. And um, play. How about that? Play. We do not double the Y. So we're going to say playing. Okay. Playing. Hmm. Okay. So those are our rules for the day um, and for your present progressive. All right. Um, great. Okay. Actually, I'm going to take a quick picture of this that can help some other people in our other classes. Okay, great. All right. So let's move on. We Now we know the spelling rules. Let's take a look at um we we already looked at the negative tenses um or maybe we didn't um let's look at that so we know here how to form the present tense right okay we know where the adverbs of frequency go let's talk about when we make these sentences negative okay what happens there and where how our formula changes so if i want to say this sentence in the negative i'm going to put not here okay so we're going to insert not between the form of to be and the main verb that has the ing so i am not walking you are not speaking she is not sharing. 
We are not exhaling. That's a bad thing. Um, they are not undertaking that project. Okay. So super easy for that there. Remember the contractions. Okay. And the pronunciation. Let's do a quick review of those contractions that we use. So for this form. Okay. So we've got I am goes to I'm. Um, and here's the pronunciation. If you've missed my other classes where we discuss pronunciation, I really think that you should join because I think that pronunciation is one of just the most under taught and, um, well, not and, under taught aspects of English. Okay. And so we really, in, in the pronunciation and fluency class, we really start at the beginning so that you have like a really good foundation for building on top of that to have great pronunciation. Okay. So this is the pronunciation of it. It's obviously not the spelling, spelling, pronunciation. When I have these lines like this, we're using the international phonetic alphabet and the letters that go along with it. So actually in my class yesterday, we started with the vowels and our, we are learning and or reviewing, for those of you who have done it before, we are reviewing the, the, um, the international phonetic alphabet and we started with the vowels, okay? I'm, that's the long I sound, okay? Um, you are, is your, okay? These are perfectly fine in written English, um, even in a pro professional email, uh, it's not colloquial, um, people in, in, um, so it's fine in written, uh, in an email to your boss. It's fine. If you are writing a professional document, I would say, um, well, you wouldn't probably be using these tenses anyways. For example, if you're a scientist or a doctor and, um, you know, then you're using a, a very different tense, you're probably using like a passive voice or, uh, and what I mean by passive voice, you can say, if you're a doctor, you can say the patient was treated. So that's like that passive voice that just sounds like more sciencey or more medical, more professional, um, so if you're writing in professional, um, you know, a journal or an article, you probably wouldn't be using the, the contractions, but in, in, you know, in work and, and everything else and letters and things like that, it's completely, completely fine. And of course, of course, we use this in spoken English as well. Mo mostly nobody says you are, if I am saying you are ready for bed, I'm angry. <laughs> if I'm, if I'm saying you're ready for bed, it's just a statement, right? So when we separate those and we don't use the contractions, there's typically a reason for it. I'm trying to, to draw out a point, or maybe I have emotion around it. I'm angry, or I'm really trying to make sure somebody understands what I'm saying. But most of the time I will say, you know, I mean, 99% of the time I'm going to use the contractions. Okay. I am, you are, she is, goes to she's. Okay. He is, is he's. I want you guys to also be paying attention to the pronunciation to these. Oh, it, well, it goes to it's. Good gosh. Um, I'm running out of room. We, R goes to we're, and then they are goes to there. Okay. So we didn't talk about this. Okay. Let's do this pronunciation. Your, so, or. We.
So we'll talk about this in the pronunciation and fluency class, but there are, when you have an R after a long sound like this, um, there are some differences, what happens to the sounds with R's sometimes, because it just be get, it gets a little difficult to have, you know, our R sound in English is, is pretty different from a lot of other languages. It's very round. Um, R, it's, and it's a, it's a fricative, meaning you can draw it out. Um, so we'll talk about that in another class, but just kind of keep in mind that R kind of, they call it color the sound. It can kind of change the sound a little bit. And that's also why, you know, a lot of kids, native English speakers, as they're learning the language, R is one of the most, if not the most difficult sound. So many kids don't even fully, um, they're not fully able to properly express that sound until maybe eight or nine years old. Um, so like this word, um, world or bird or girl for many years, um, you know, one of my kids couldn't say this one. They would say, whoa, 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 you know, so it was, it was, it wasn't coming out right or bud instead of bird. Cause it's, you know, it's a really back here sound girl be like, go, <laughs> it's, it's difficult, especially with this RL at the end. So that can be, that can be really tricky. So anyways, that's a little bit of a tangent for you there, but um, okay. And then lastly is there now this, you know, in English, obviously we have three homophones with the word there. Um, and it's there, there, and there it's like, I know these things are, again, these are the things that drive people crazy. <laughs> so this is the one that we're doing, but these are all pronounced in the exact same way, but they have three different meanings, right? This is the possessive pronoun. That's their house. Okay. There as in not here, it's there, right? It's talking about a location, but that's something that's farther away. And then there is the possessive, um, the, it, or excuse me, it's the contraction. This is the possessive. That's the location. This is the contraction of they are. Okay. The, and so then we've, we've got this is the sound. Can you guys see that all the way down? The, that's the voiced TH sound there. The, oh gosh. Air, air. Actually, I think I would probably say it's more like this. Okay. So when you look at the, um, the international phonetic like uh, alphabet, there are a couple of different iterations or versions of it. Most, you know, if you let's say there's three different styles, most of them have the same um, consonant sounds, and some of them just vary with how they write the um, the vowel sounds. And then some of them have a little more, you know, slashes and things that kind of can show um, stress or different sounds that don't exist necessarily in English. But um, keep in mind that you can take the, I, I really, really recommend, and it's a great combination, is the pronunciation and fluency class. Because I really think, especially if you're, you know, you're doing these grammar classes, it's just such a nice co combination um, to make sure that you're getting all parts of it. And I really try to link things together you know, I, you know, so in the grammar class, we're talking about some of the pronunciation points in the pronunciation class. We're going to go way deeper into those points and really teach the rules. Like we're learning here, right? These rules about how you, um, how you share or how do you, you know, change, drop the E, double the T, any of those things. Those are just the rules of English. Um, and there are rules that kind of help you to at least organizing your brain the pronunciation uh, of English, which I think is more complex than any other aspect of um, of English learning in general. Um, and the part that creates the most frustration, okay? I, and I had a, a big conversation with the class yesterday about this too, you know, having um, some, I have some stories about students 
who have had some pretty big problems with um, with teaching or with speaking English, right? So I think it's just one of those aspects, especially um, that people, even if they're speaking English on a daily basis, you could be making mistakes and might not even know that you're making a mis mistake. Uh, I've told this story a couple of times. Um, one of my students who I worked with for a couple years ago, um, she uh, had been, she still lives in the United States. She's married to an American guy. They've been married, I don't know, maybe five years. Um, and anyways, she and her sister were doing a class with me and they decided uh, we were reading a story and I was reading and then they were repeating after me. They really wanted to work on advanced grammar um, and pronunciation and because they were very high level. I mean, they're fluent English speakers, in my opinion, but they really, you know, had this feeling like, oh, sometimes people don't understand me and I really hate it. And so let's practice. Um, anyway, so we were in our class and I read the word salmon, right? Uh, salmon like this. I said this word salmon and she was like, wait, teacher, what, what did you just say? She's like, can you repeat that word? I was like, sure. Salmon. Um, and she was like, what? She's like, that's not how it's said. Don't you say salmon? And I was like, uh, no, I know this is how we say it. <laughs> you know. Anyways. So, but the look on her face was like sheer, like, just she was mortified right she was like i cannot believe i've been saying that wrong for like 10 years and nobody ever corrected me and so one of the things that i talk about in the pronunciation fluency class is you know you, you have to do a couple of things if you really really want to address your accent or increase your fluency or your what i like to call it's comprehensibility that uh, you know, when you're speaking, somebody is listening to you and able to understand what you're saying. So your comprehensibility. And so in this case, she was saying Salmon and, you know, everybody's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what she's saying. Or maybe somebody said, I have no idea what she just said, but she was so mortified and just like couldn't believe that nobody had ever corrected her and she's been saying it wrong the whole time. So these are some of the things that I think I'd like to address in this class. And so, like I said, there something like this comes out of nowhere, kind of, but there are some rules. And so learning the rules um, and learning the alphabet, this, you know, helps in all areas. So, um, okay. So we've got the present, we know the negative, or excuse me, the, the affirmative, we've got the negative, we know the contractions. The last piece I'd like to talk to you guys about before we jump into working on some exercises together is, and when I say exercises, we're not jumping around. We're going to work on English exercises or practice. So the last kind of piece is when you create a question, right? So like a question and we're going to, you know, there's a couple different kinds of questions. We're going to talk about the yes, no questions. So a question that can be answered with either yes or no. Okay. So taking these still, these examples here, what are we going to do? Here's what we've done. It's am I speaking? Okay. It's kind of a silly question. Am I speaking? Sounds like you might be. A. So what's happening here is we're just moving the position. We're taking the verb and we're placing it here and we're switching the position of the subject. Okay, am I walking? Are you speaking? Okay, I used the wrong word here. Um, it, how about this? Is it sharing? Kind of a strange question, but it brings home the point. Are we exhaling okay oops and then finally are they are they under taking okay okay those are the questions so we've just switched the position of the verb with the subject and then we've simply created the question 
and added a question mark at the end, okay? Then to answer, of course, you can just say, yes, I am, no, I'm not. We do not, we don't do a contraction here. We don't say, yes, I'm, okay? In an answer like that. Okay, um, are you? Yes, you are, no, you aren't. So that's a little bit different from the other contractions. So you can say you're, right? You can say you are not. We didn't talk about the. You can do it two ways. You can combine here and make it your, or you can combine here and make it aren't. And you can do that with the second, third, and they and we, okay? You're not, we're not, she's not, she isn't. Okay, those are all the same. Is it sharing? Yes, it is, or no, it, let's do the opposite here, isn't. I think you guys already know this. Yes, we are. So in the affirmative, you're not going to use um, the contraction. Or no, we aren't. You can say here, no, we are not. But I would say no, we're, we aren't, or no, either way is fine, okay? Um, and then finally, oh gosh, my writing is getting more and more terrible. Yes, they are, no contraction, or no, they aren't, same thing, okay? All right. Lots of good stuff here. Um, as always, you guys, if you're getting stuck, um, let's you know have you go ahead and um, let's see what else. I want to just check my stuff. Yeah, we're gonna do the review. We'll do that on Tuesday because we've got to end here pretty quickly. I want to do one more thing here with you guys, and then give you a little bit of review for homework. So what we do here is I'm gonna switch this over. And then I'm gonna share my screen so I can see what is happening. Okay, so um, let's take a look at this. This is from our book. Read this post to a class electron. Read this post to a class electronic bulletin board. There are 11 mistakes. Use the um, simple present and the present progressive. Find the first mistake is already corrected. Find 10 more, okay? So we're going to kind of use everything we've applied in the last couple of days to kind of make sure that we fully understand this. Okay. Hi, everybody. I am writing. So they changed I write. I'm writing this note to introduce myself to you, my classmates in English 047. Our teacher is wanting a profile from each of us. So I see a mistake in this one. We don't use this wanting because it's, it's a non-action verb. And I believe we talked about that the other day. So we're gonna, is wanting, it says, what did it say? Find that, so we're gonna say once. Instead of is wanting, we're just gonna take this and do once. Okay, hopefully you can read my writing. Okay, at first I was confused by this assignment because my English dictionary is defining profile as quote, a side view of someone's head. Everything to me sounds fine there. At first, I was confused by this assignment because my English dictionary, oh no, is defining. So define is a non-action word too. So we're gonna just change that to define, okay? My English dictionary defines, make sure, because this is a third person. My English dictionary is a thing, it's an it, right? So we're gonna say, um, we're gonna say, it defines profile as a side view of someone's head. I thought, why does she wants that? Okay. Now there's a problem here. Why does she wants that? So this is a question. And in the question, we use the do form, the do auxiliary. We didn't talk about this, but I'm hoping that you guys remember this. Why does she? So if we have does, it already tells us the correct form. So then we can use the base form of this verb. So we just simply take that S off. Okay. Why does she want that? Okay. 
This is a common, common mistake. So it really comes down to when you're forming the WH questions, okay? What are the WH questions? We've got who, what, where, when, why, and how, even though <laughs> how is not WH, we typically just call these all WH questions. So, so when we've got our, I am speaking or, um, you know, any, let's, let's just come up with, actually, let's not do this. Let's do speak. Uh, and let's create a couple quick questions so that you guys kind of just remember how we do this. So let's do who, who, so your, your formula is the WH, right? Does, and then we've got the do auxiliary. Okay. Who does she, so then you've got your subject. You guys see that subject. This is our formula. Um, let's kind of forget that here. Um, who does she? Talk to, okay. Um, this isn't necessarily the present progressive. So this is just an example of who does she talk to That's Sorry. That's my question. So up here, we're going to put subject and main verb and then kind of the remainder of your sentence okay um if you want to use a present progressive one um what so this one is a present tense right what um is she wearing tonight okay we're going to talk too about usage about using this um we can sometimes use um, present tense and present progressive in the future. So another, a good example of that is um, when does the airplane take off tomorrow? Okay, so you're talking about something that happens tomorrow, but you're actually using the present tense, okay? And there's some a, a couple of different examples when that can be totally fine, <laughs> okay? Um, where... Are they driving to? So keep in mind that you have to have that to at the end. Where are they driving? You need to have where are they driving to, okay? When, um, so these are present progressive. Let's do another present tense. When does the, when does, um, the garbage go out. <laughs> All right. So in our neighborhood, there's a machine that comes by or a, a guy who comes by in a truck that picks up our garbage one time per week. So we might ask the question, when does the garbage go out? Okay. And then finally, let's do, so this is present progressive. This is present simple present simple, present simple. Let's do one more. Oh, no, nope, that's present progressive. So let's do why is, why is, why are, but that, let's try a different tense. Why are they um, flying instead of driving? So you can notice here, I used one subject, okay? I used two main verbs with ing, but I didn't need to say, why are they flying instead of they driving? You don't need to say it twice. You've got it here once. So you can say this instead of this, okay? You don't need to, and you shouldn't use they more than one time, okay? Um, great. Okay, I'm gonna let you guys finish this class bulletin. I want you to find 10 mistakes. Let's see, we found two. And so you need to find eight more. So go ahead and do that on your own time. And we will look at this in our class again on um, 
on Tuesday. So let me go. All right, you guys, thank you so much for being here. Um, we will meet again uh, next Tuesday at 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. And thank you so much for being here. Um, I hope you all have a very wonderful day. Bye. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. Jill here with Go English Coach. Today, we've got class three our advanced in our advanced grammar one series. Um, starting a little bit later today, just getting a little bit of uh, stuff copied and things ready for you guys here. So the things that I would like to cover today, this is always just like my general you know, outline of the class and what I intend to do. And sometimes my teaching goes like this because that's just how it is um and anyway so we're going to start with this activity here on the board i'm calling it a spelling exercise next i have some work with um in the book so i'll move over to the desk at that time i would love to wrap up our unit on the present tense and present progressive because i think you guys are moving nice and quickly with this and then finally I would like to start working on some writing. Um, and so I, you know, in my opinion, you know, working with, uh, you know, being a student of anything, but especially a language, there's a lot of information that like comes in. And so we also need to have this pushing out. And so the pieces that come in are listening, right? And reading. Those are things that we take in information. And then the ways that we go out are obviously writing and speaking. So uh, if you think about learning a language in those terms, think about like when a child learns its first language, they can always understand a lot more than they can express. So part of the like unfair part of learning a language is that well, maybe it's not unfair, but if you think about it, it makes sense, right? Like information coming in, there's more information coming in and less going out. A baby, if you say no, they know to stop that, right? Maybe they don't listen, but in general, you know, children who are learning their first language can understand a lot more than they can express. And that is the same in most cases with adults as well. Um, so we really have to push or create a situation for you that you are kind of forced to do it, right? So if you're, if we use the example of the child learning its first language, it's the same thing. The child will eventually need things, right? So as a baby, they express by just crying and then because their needs are very small, right? They usually just need uh, to go to bed, they need to eat, and they need to have a diaper change, right? As they get older, their needs become more specific. And so the they can't just cry anymore. They need words to express. I want more banana or I'm still thirsty, right? And so then they start th the need for them to express increases. And so then their brain allows them to to obtain and and use then they're forced to use and to to absorb the language and then to use it okay so we have to kind of create a similar scenario for adult learners or people who are learning so so language learning for your first language is like that um for your second or third or whatever English is to you, we have to create scenarios or opportunities for you to take what you have learned and use it, okay? So that's that's my goal here. So there's a portion of every class that is coming in, right? It's the information that I'm giving you. And then there is, a, you know, there is work on your part that needs to be done for, for the full cycle of teaching and learning to happen. So that means that 
when I ask for you guys to do some work, I would love for you to get it done. And it's not because I want you to just work hard. It's because I want this to be successful for you. Okay. I want you to learn and reach your goals. Okay. And so while speaking and writing can often be a challenge or scary, or you get nervous, um, I totally understand. And that is very, very normal. Um, but that's the great thing about this is that we're, you know, in a safe place together and we can, um, I can help correct. Okay. So coming to these classes live, I mean, this is great if you guys are watching on the replay, but coming to the classes live is really going to be the best way to go about this. Okay. All right. Let's jump in. All of that has been said. <laughs> okay. So what I have on the board behind me are 18 verbs. I've got three categories in each with each verb. So we've got the base verb. I've got the simple present third person, okay? Because in the simple present, we don't really change much except in that third person. And then I've got the participle category. Does that make sense? The participle is the ing form. And the reason that we call it the participle is because it's not the full verb, right? The full verb is the form of to be plus the participle, which is just the ing, okay? Lots of very in, important words here. <laughs> okay, so um, I've got my three different colors here and I'm gonna just be flopping back and forth here. So let's start with our first one. The verb is answer, answer. That's the base form of the verb, okay? Um, let's just go down the list here. So then I just am using one color. <laughs> if my... Uh, simple present third person is asks. That one's a very tricky one to say. You guys should practice that because you've got asks, asks. Uh, it's it's s k s at the end, and that can be very tricky for people. It's it's tricky for native speakers, just so you know. So the base form of this we're going to put here is ask. Simply ask. Okay. So we're kind of working backwards to work into what the base is. Okay. So the participle here is coming, C-O-M-I-N-G. What is our base? So we're practicing working backwards to find out what the base is and then also the spelling, making sure that we're getting the spelling correct. Coming, okay, so I didn't write this very well here. C-O-M-I-N-G. Let's just write that a little bit better. Okay. So the base form of that verb is come, C-O-M-E, with that silent E at the end. So then remember the rule about verbs with the silent E at the end. When you make it into the participle form, you drop the E and you add I-N-G, okay? Okay, so this uh, simple present third person of this, the pronunciation is does, okay? The verb is do. All right, we've got eat, so that one's already done for us. The participle of this verb is employing, employing. So you guys in this advanced class get a little higher level verbs here. So to employ is like to hire somebody. So if you say I employ two other teachers, that means I'm the boss and I gave a job to those people, I employ them, okay? Flying for the participle here, the verb is fly. And then we've got forget. We've got a lot of them in this base column here. So we've got has in this, uh, the, the third person's uh, simple present. Oh my gosh. The verb is have. This is one of those irregular ones. So some of the other very common irregular ones are like do and go, right? So for go, we say goes, and for do, we say does. Remember the pronunciation of those. Goes and does, okay? If you haven't um, taken a look at my pronunciation course, that's a really helpful thing when we start talking about the International Phonetic Alphabet. I use it a lot in all of my classes. So 
um, getting a head start or a jump start on that and getting really um, dialed with that is, is super helpful in all of your language learning. Okay, let's look at 12 here. The participle is lying, okay? Lying, look what happened here. That's the verb to lie, means to not tell the truth, okay? To lie, and then it changes to L-Y-I-N-G again. That'll happen down here, so keep, pay attention to what's happening here. Okay, the simple present third person of this verb is says. Again, with the pronunciation there is eh. says, not says, it says. That's the pronunciation. Okay, the verb in the base form is say. And then the final one here, this participle is controlling. It's got the double L there. So what do you guys think? Control. Do you think it has two L's at the end or just one? Just the one, okay? So it's got that CVC, remember that rule that we talked about last week? CVC at the end, the consonant, vowel, consonant. And so we double that one. Okay, so I'm going to er erase this because it's getting kind of in our way here. All right, let's grab the blue marker and we're going to go through the third person singular in the simple present. Okay, so our base verb here is answer. Our simple present third person is simply answers. Okay, answers. Okay, by goes to. Ooh, not that spelling. Buys. What are we doing here? Comes. So, z sound here. Does. We already got that one. Eat goes to. Eats. Okay, employ. Nothing tricky here, just simply employs. What happens here? Fly, it has a Y at the end. So we're going to change that to uh, Y goes to I-E-S, okay? The CVC, remember, we're going to double final consonant. Okay, forget goes to forgets, okay? Forgets. All right, let's keep going on this second part here. Hurry has a Y, so we're going to employ this one here. Hurries, I-E-S. Lie goes to lies, right? He lies all the time, okay? <laughs> open goes to opens. Rain goes to rains. Reach. This one isn't irregular, right? So if it's got CH, SH, X, or Z, what happens there? We use ES, right? Yes, um, or S. Okay, so reach, reaches. So we've got, instead of just S, we use the ES, and the pronunciation is a little different. So rains, ns, reaches, reaches. Okay, so it's, you can actually hear that there's a i in the middle there. Reaches. Okay, tie goes to ties and control controls. Okay, so we've got a couple of our little notes over here just to kind of help you guys remember. All right, let's finish this part up and do the green part. So we're doing the participle, the I-N-G participle, okay? So this is where we're gonna add the I-N-G, okay? So, and remember, the full verb contains is coming, it is raining, I am controlling, okay? Those, that's the full part. That's why this is just the participle. So don't, you know, don't forget you guys when you are using this verb to include the form of to be. That's a critical, critical part of this, um, of this tense, the, the present progressive, okay? And a lot of people 
um, don't use it. All right, so answer is going to be answering. Asks, asking, buys, buying. Okay, I am buying a new house. Um, do, does, and then doing. So just simply adding ing onto there. We've got employing, flying. Um, okay, and then we've got forgetting. Okay, we, we don't use this a lot, um, but let's keep going. Have goes to having, so we're going to drop that ing, or excuse me, we're going to drop the e and add ing, okay? Hurry, hurrying. What are we going to do here? Hurrying. I am hurrying. I'm moving quickly, okay? I'm hurrying. Opening. Nope, no two ends there. That does not look right. So sometimes, you know, there's so much, um, there are so many just rules and then exceptions in English. Sometimes I will say many times um, people make spelling mistakes in English. It's raining today. It's raining. She is reaching to get her jacket. Or whatever she is it is saying maybe i'm talking about my computer it is saying that the weather is going to be cold today it is saying okay tying tying so remember from above i am tying my shoes and then the final one is controlling with that double l okay wonderful so if you guys want to take a minute and Take a little screenshot of that. That might not be a bad idea. And then we are going to move over here to the desk and do um, an exercise on paper here together. Okay, great. Hi, everybody. It's nice to be up and close with you. Okay, so here's what we've got. Um, this is from my Focus on Grammar book. So giving all credit to that. And then actually, while we're sitting here, this is another book that I really like. And it well, it goes really well with um, teaching grammar. It's called Great Writing. And it's by the National Geographic Learning and Sun Gage Learning. And um, also one other book that I wanted to share with you guys. This, I think this works really well. It's a reference guide. So it's not really like, it doesn't really have a whole lot of um, activities, but um, I think that these are just awesome. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. So it's got like these charts, you know, where it's just very clearly, there's not a lot of text and it's these pictures. So this is all of the simple tenses. So simple present, simple past and simple future. Uh, I think this is a great representation of when we use those. So the examples are it snows in Alaska, and then it'll give you here the meaning of it. Okay. So, and then simply in the simple past, what does that mean? And, and when do we use it? Right. It snowed yesterday. It's a one-time event that I am discussing that happened in the past. And then for simple future, it's um, a one-time thing that's happening or going to happen in the future. So you can say it will snow or it's going to snow, okay? So that's kind of like the great, just very easy way of explaining things. Um, and the, it, I mean, it goes on with all of the tenses. So here's the progressive tenses, present, past, future progressive, the perfect tenses. So a perfect tense, um, um, for example, is when we use have. I have lived in the United States for 10 years, okay? Um, and, and then it shows the, the timelines and stuff here too. I just, I think it's so great. The perfect progressive tenses, I have been living in the United States for 10 years. So it's just a little bit more of an advanced um, 
um, tense, I guess. Um, and then we've got these summary ones and these are all, and then you've got the spellings. We have other tenses too, because we have conditional tenses and all of that. So that's really, those are in our advanced class, but. Um, okay, and actually, let's just take a quick look at Oh yeah, those are the ones we talked about with the stative verbs. Adjectives. Pronunci Gosh, yep, I love this. I love it, I love it. Um, here's another great list and I can post this in our app here. So this is a list of the irregular verbs in an alphabetical list. Okay, irregular meaning you know, when you've got the simple form is to arise, these are the past. So then once we start talking about past tense, we really have to take a look at um, the, the most common um, irregular verbs, okay? So we'll be starting the past tense review and teaching on uh, in our next class on Thursday, okay? So let's save that for then. All right. Let's save that for then. And let's take a look at this. So we're gonna use this as the hard part here. Okay, so let's just do one more quick example or practice with this. Let's see if I can get this more looking a lot better here. Okay. Okay, so the simple and present progressive, it says complete the article, use the correct form of the verbs in parentheses simple present or present progressive. So if you would like, I would like for you to pause this video and go ahead and get started and maybe do through 10, okay? And then we'll work on the rest together. So go ahead and pause and then fill in these, you know, you can just write on a piece of paper, one, two, three, four, all the way to 10 and then start answering the questions, okay? Using the cues in the, in the paragraph to, um, to help yourself make the decision, is it in the present progressive or is it something in the simple present? Okay, how was that for you guys? Hopefully that was so easy. <laughs> okay, let's take a look. Let's do all of these together. Hopefully you did 10 on your own. That's what I really would like for you to do. Okay, so it says right now, Pam O'Neill. So this is my hint right here. Right now means in this moment. Is taking. So therefore, because it's in this moment, we're going to use is taking. Okay. Pam O'Neill is taking a test, but she. So here's what. So negative to no. We're going to say she doesn't know it. Okay. Remember, we would not use no in the progressive tense because it's a stative verb, okay? She, focus on what she write and not on how her handwriting looks. She is focusing on what she's writing, is writing and not on how her handwriting looks. This is a stative verb. So to appear or to seem is look, okay? So we're gonna use the present tense for that. The person who will analyze that test is a graphologist, a graphologist, someone who studies because it's something they do all the time, not is studying now. Somebody who studies handwriting, okay? And in, uh, let's see, graphologists believe, okay, hopefully you got all of these correct. I'm, I'm hoping that you're correct. Graphologists believe, so this is like a general statement. They believe in the past, they believe in the future, and they believe now. They generally believe that a person's handwriting gives an indication of his or her personality and character. Oh gosh, I wonder what a graphologist would say about my handwriting. Um, okay. These days, a number of businesses use 
graphologists. Handwriting sometimes convinces employers to hire one job, job applicant over another. Okay, so we've got just a couple that are in the present progressive tense. Hang on just a second here. I want to make sure that we are. Yes, we are. Yes. Okay. We are recording. Perfect. Okay. Let's continue here. Oh, got all kinds of stuff on me. Okay. Um, let's see. Why don't you guys pause for another minute and do here through 20. Okay. We are back. What exactly blank company graphologist Perry Vance hopes So we have a space here and then we've got this one here and there's no verb here. Um but it is a question and so my guess is that they want us to use uh, is or are here and then put this in the present progressive tense, which we can do. What is company graphologist Perry Vance hoping to learn from applicants writing samples? Okay, so this is that plural possessive form. Um, what exactly is company graphologist Perry Vance hoping to learn from applicants writing samples? So we go up at the end and we say that. I always, so here, here's his quote, okay? I always, so when he says always, that means it's the present tense, simple present. I always look for clues to possible behavior, he explained. For example, the slant of the writing, like if you write you know, like this or like this. The slant of the writing actually tells a lot. Okay, let's do, so it's a question. So we're gonna say, does the writing lean to the left or the right? That took me a minute to figure out what they wanted us to do there. A left slant often indicates, so here's your verb, here's that adverb of frequency that's before the verb, in most cases it is, right? A shy personality. The position of the sample on the page is also important. important. This is pretty interesting. A right hand, a right hard margin of the page represents The future. Here's a writing sample from an executive who right now is planning. And the reason I'm using that is because it says right now, okay, right now is planning a new direction for a large company. Notice, notice that this person doesn't leave much room in the right hand margin. This is someone who not avoid looking at the future, doesn't avoid looking at the future, okay? What about signatures, I asked? Yes, signatures show, because these are just kind of general, um, his general thoughts that in general signatures show us a lot about someone said Vance look at this one by a chief executive officer of a large firm he is on the news a lot these days because the federal government is investigating his company those very large strokes are typical of a person who thinks about himself first and takes advantage of other people. Vance always warns, so for me, this is present tense because it says always, 
warns, however, that his analysis doesn't guarantee an applicant's future job performance. So doesn't, that's the negative form of the simple present, guarantee an applicant's future job performance. It's no substitute for careful review of a complete application, okay? All right, so hopefully you've got most of those correct and good work on that. Let's see. Let's do one other thing here and then we will wrap up for today. This is our review of this chapter. So then we will move into the past um, tenses on in Thursday's class, okay? Um, our review, it says, so we've got three sections, A, B, and C. So if you need some time to pause, go ahead and do that and then circle. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna choose the present progressive or the present tense, okay? So this woman's name is Ekaterina, is helping, helps me with my Russian homework every weekend. So this is your indicator to tell you which one. So she's not doing it right now. If this said now, then we would choose this. But because it says every weekend, we're gonna choose helps. Felix is working on a new project these days. Felix works on a new project these days. So we're gonna say is working. R, do you ever talk on your cell phone while you're driving? So this is a present tense question. E, if it's present progressive, you're gonna use R. If it's um, simple present, you're gonna use do, okay? But since this is just, this is not ing, we use do. Do you ever talk on your cell phone while you're driving? Okay, so you can see that there's down here a simple present and a present progressive in the same sentence, and that's completely fine, okay? So something is happening while you're driving, and in the middle, you talk on the phone, okay? Four, I don't understanding or understand what this, word's me what this word means. Can you explain it? We don't say, I don't understanding, okay? So we say, I don't understand because it's a non-action verb, okay? We usually go or we go usually to the beach. So here we're looking not at present progressive and simple present. We're looking at the placement or the location of the adverb of frequency. So which one is correct? We usually go or we go usually to the beach for a vacation. Remember the rule with usually, um, let's see if I can find that rule here. Um, that is actually in my other book. So let me grab that here. Okay, here's the rules for that. Um, so with simple present adverbs of frequency, so how often something happens, Here's the rule, adverbs of frequency usually go before the verb, okay? Here's the example, women always kiss. This is your verb, this is the adverb of frequency, okay? In France, women often kiss. Verb, adverb of frequency. So adverbs of frequency usually go before the verb. Now, then there's an exception, right? Because there's always a rule exception in English. However, sometimes and usually, can also go at the beginning of a sentence. So here's an example. I sometimes wear shorts at home or sometimes I wear shorts at home, okay? However, one more piece here, adverbs of frequency usually go after the verb be. So the verb to be is our, the, you know, those two, if you are using those, the verb, the adverb will go after it. So she is, always late okay she is always funny okay um she is never happy <laughs> okay so keep that in mind those are your rules all right good work you guys um let's do this next section okay complete the conversation with the simple present or present progressive form of the verb in parentheses so it says, Anna, we have Anna and Kim speaking to each other. It's a conversation. 
Hi, Kim. I blank Jeff Goodale. Is he here? Okay. I look for or I am looking for. Okay. I am looking for. So the verb here is actually to look for, is to search, right? It's different than look. It's to look for. Kim says, I think he's here somewhere. I think. Okay. He blank carry a cell phone today. So I blank to give him a message for Lynn. He isn't. So we've got it's a negative carrying. C-A-R-R-Y-I-N-G. A cell phone today. So I need to give him a message. Okay. I blank see him. I see him. Okay. He is standing next to Kevin. Jeff, hi, call Lynn. Okay, question mark. She blank is waiting for your call right now. Is waiting. That blank serious. That sounds serious. Can I use your phone? Sure. I not believe. So I don't believe in it's anything serious. She just wants you to buy a new cell phone. Okay. Great. All right, you guys, last part here, and then we're going to close for today. So this one has, it's a, it's a paragraph that has five mistakes. So let's find those mistakes. Um, so it's a little note. Hi, Lita. How do you do these days? Um, we're all fine. I'm writing to tell you that we are not living in California anymore. So we, this might be, how do you do these days is like, okay, how are you? doing we just moved to Oregon also we are expecting a baby we're looking for an interesting name for our new daughter do you have any ideas right now we're thinking about Gabriella because it it has good nicknames for example Gabby Bree and Ella all seem good to us. How are those nicknames sound to you? How do those nicknames sound to you? We hope you'll write soon and tell us your news. Love, Samantha. Okay, so we found, let's see, one, two, three, four. Did we miss one here? How do you do these days? We're all fine. I'm writing to tell you that we not living in Cal. We are how about this? We You can say we are not living in California, or you can say we don't live. Let's say we don't live in California anymore. We just moved to Oregon, and also we are expecting a baby. We're looking for an interesting name for our new daughter. Do you have any ideas? Right now, we're thinking about Gabriella, because it has good nicknames. For example, Gabi, Brie, Ella, all seem good to us. How do those nicknames sound to you? We hope you'll write soon and tell us your news. Okay, um, let's see. So for next um, class on Thursday, we will begin doing the past tense. We'll look at some of the spellings and the pronunciations for the past tense. So it's kind of a big class. And I hope that you're excited and ready for it. So um, I can't wait to see you guys there. And let's see if I can figure this out. You guys have a great rest of your day and I can't wait to see you on Thursday. Thank you so much. Good work today. All right, hello everybody, welcome back again. Um, today we've got our advanced grammar one class, class number four, advanced grammar. Um, so this class is 
kind of similar to our intermediate grammar class, but we move a little bit faster. And, you know, I kind of make the assumption that you have done most of these things before. And so if any of this stuff is new to you, I think, you know, going and trying some of the intermediate classes as well would be a really um, good idea. Um, today we are going to, so in the past, last week, we were looking at present tense and uh, present progressive. We did some work with comparing the two of those um, and talking about when we use them. Um, we talked about the spelling um, changes that happen with some of the verbs with the ES and the S. Um, pronunciation of some of those sounds. We also discussed the participle spellings with ing and some of the um, irregular forms of that. Um, so now we're moving into, um, we're going to do a little bit of review on that in unit, the unit review. One more kind of, these two exercises will essentially be kind of wrapping those, um, that unit up. And then we're going to jump into our next unit, which is the past tense and past progressive. Okay. And at the end, we, I will give you guys a very um, complete whole full list of the past tense irregular verbs, because those in English um, are, there's a lot of them, um, you know, so practicing those. And I'd like for you guys to study that list um, in, before our next class. Okay, so that's our general overview of what we're doing today. Let's um, come over to the computer and we'll get started on doing that unit review. All right. So here we have, let's see, let me go back to our unit review. Okay. Um, so what we're doing here is we are working just to finalize and maybe solidify that you guys have learned everything we need to learn here. Okay. And you're kind of testing yourself and your own knowledge. And then if you're, you know, if you don't do well on this, you know, go back and watch some of the videos and practice a little bit more. Okay. So why don't you pause the video right now and go ahead and do these five. And then we will come back together and work on them together. Okay, let's take a look, you guys. So number one, Ekaterina is helping and helps me with my Russian homework every weekend. Is helping or helps me. So when you say something like every weekend, it happens often or regularly. So we're going to use the present tense, helps, okay? Felix is working or works on new project these days. These days also tells me it's happening in a period of time, not exactly right now. So we're going to say he is working, okay? I mean, he's working on it now, but it's over a period of time. Sorry, I kind of said that incorrectly. So is working. Felix is working on a new project these days. R, do you ever talk on your cell phone while you're driving? Do you ever or are you ever? So R goes with the I-N-G form. Do goes with the present tense. And since this is present, we're going to go with do. I have puppies. That's terrible. I don't understanding what this word means. I don't understand. Remember with the words understand, know, think, feel, um, we don't use the action verb. Okay, uh, excuse me, we use the non-action form. So it's just the regular um, present tense. So we don't really say, I don't understanding. It's not um, grammatically correct. Okay, and then last, we usually go or we go usually. So remember some of those rules about adverbs and where they go in relation to the subject and the verb. We've got the subject, Adverb and verb. So it goes before. So we usually go. Okay. All right. Take another minute, you guys. Pause here and write down these sentence or the, the correct form of these. So let's do the first one. Hi, Kim. I blank looking for Jeff Goodale. Is he here? Um, okay. So I am looking for. Okay. I am looking for because it's happening right now 
Okay, so pause and do the rest of them. Okay, let's do the rest of these together. Hopefully you guys did really well here. I blank, he's here somewhere, I think. Okay, that's a non-action verb, so we don't use ing. He blank, a cell phone today, so I need to give him a message from Lynn. So I, so we don't use with need, we don't say needing, okay? It's a non-action, so we're gonna use the present tense. So I need to give him a message. He not carry, he isn't carrying, okay? That's not very clear. Isn't carrying a cell phone today. So I need to give him a message from Lynn. Okay. Kim says, I see him. Again, that's one of those non-action or not the stative verb. So we just say, I, bitch, I wrote the wrong one. I see him. He is standing. She says, I see him, which means right now, right? He is standing next to Kevin. Jeff, hi, call Lynn, okay? She blank, wait for your call right now, which tells me when you say right now that we're gonna use is waiting, okay? That blank serious, can I use your phone? That sounds serious. So that's one of those um, appearance or um, like I feel, I think, I sound. So that sounds, so we use it in the present tense and not in the present progressive. And then the last one here, sure, I blank, it's anything serious. She just blank you to buy a new cell phone. <laughs> okay, um, so I don't believe, again, we don't use the progressive tense with believe very often uh, or really ever. It's anything serious. She just wants to you to buy a new cell phone. Okay. Um, hopefully that was very easy for you guys. Let's take a look at this bottom part. So you're going to find and correct five mistakes. So please go ahead and pause right now and do that. Okay, so let's take a look at this together. Um, hi, Lita, how do you do these days? We're all fine. I'm writing to tell you that we're not living in California anymore. Uh, let's say here, we don't live in California anymore. We just moved to Oregon. Also, we expect a baby. We are expecting a baby. We're looking for an interesting name for our daughter. Do you have any ideas? We're looking for an interesting name. That's great. Do you have any ideas? Right now, we're thinking about Gabriella because it has good nicknames. For example, Gabby, Brie, and Ella all seem good to us. How are those nicknames? How do those nicknames sound to you? We hope you'll write soon and tell us your news. So we've got one, two, three, four. Kind of we all seem good to us. How do those nicknames? We hope you'll write soon and tell us your news. Um, how are you? Let's see. How do you do these days? How are you? Let's do that. Okay. I think we did this. So this might be another quick review for you. So no big deal if we've done it already. Sometimes it's hard for me to remember, even though I keep such good notes about what we do in class, if we're doing things again. But one thing that is very good to know about, obviously, with learning is that you need repetition and dedication for learning. So, so don't worry about moving, you know, quickly through things. We, you know, more practice means the more you learn and the more it stays in your brain. Um, okay. So I wanted to share with you also um, in my intermediate class, we did, um, let's see, let me just move that over here. So many things on my desk. Okay. Okay. So here's what we worked on in my other class and I wanted to share it with you here. So I, we did an exercise 
where we were talking about doing something new. Okay, so something that I'm doing new is paying attention to or working on my health. Okay, um, so um, things that I usually do is that I usually eat well. Okay, I usually drink lots of water. Let me take a sip now. I usually get enough sleep. Okay. So I've made all of these tenses, the same color down here. This is my, this part here is my paragraph. Okay. Okay. So you'll notice here in the present tense, when I use these things, like things I do normally or often or regularly, or just every day, I made this color, this kind of salmon color. Okay. So things that I'm doing new, maybe starting just last week, I am now, or newly, I am taking new vitamins, okay? I am working out or I am exercising more. I am paying attention to the stress in my life and I'm trying to reduce, trying to reduce my stress, okay? Um, great. Um, ew, let me get this out of here. Um, okay. Let's see. So the new things that I'm, okay, sorry. No, here, this is my paragraph. And then I also wanted you to pay attention to down here. I did some adverbs. Okay. Not all of them are adverbs of frequency, but some of them are. Um, okay. So this was my paragraph right here. So recently I have been working on stabilizing my health. Okay, so this tense I underlined because it's the past perfect progressive tense. And while we haven't done that in this class as an advanced student, you have probably studied that before. Um, so I just highlighted it here for us to take a mental note, okay? So recently I have been working on stabilizing my health. I usually eat pretty healthy. I eat lots of vegetables and protein. I drink lots of water and take vitamins too. So here, since these are things that I normally do, I have this in the same color, okay? They're all in the present tense because it's something I normally do and it's regular. Uh, but for some reason, I have not been feeling very well, okay? So that's that past perfect progressive tense, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay. Um, so that's kind of where I change into the things that I'm trying now. So what, what, what typically happens is I often, so the, here's my adverb often, I often feel sluggish and tired even after sleeping a full night. So I often, what is, that's one of these adverbs here. Okay, so it's something that indicates how many times I do it, like usually or recently, right? I often or sometimes, I often, remember we said we did the percentages, it's like 75%, 80%, more than half of the time, I feel sluggish. Um, does everybody know what sluggish means? So a slug in English is like a snail without the shell. And how do they move? They move really slowly, um, okay? So we the word sluggish means I move slowly, maybe I'm kind of tired, okay? Maybe my brain is kind of gray and not really clear. I'm not thinking clearly, okay? So I often feel sluggish and tired even after sleeping a full night, okay? So now I move into this, where I'm talking about the present progressive, okay? So I am now, I am working with a few doctors to try and figure out what is going on. But for now, I am trying a little, excuse me, I am trying a lot of different things, okay? Mostly, I'm trying to get to bed earlier at night, drink more water, and exercise. We live, so back in this present tense, 
because it's something that happens all the time, right? I live at a high elevation. It means I, I live in the mountains and therefore it's very dry here. So I am usually very thirsty. So I usually am very thirsty. So notice please where I put, um, actually, let me do this and change that to that. Okay, so there's my subject is I, the adverb of frequency, and then my verb. I usually am very thirsty. Also, I really think that stress has played a large role in how I am feeling. And therefore, I am working on reducing the stress in my life. Okay, so those are some present progressive forms there. And then my final sentence is, I hope that with a renewed attention to these aspects of my health, that I will be able to feel better and have more energy for life in general, okay? So this form here is a future tense, and it's the will be able to, be able to is the, is the verb can, right? So I can, we say in the present tense, in the past, I couldn't, right? I can in the present. And in the future, we say be able to. We don't say I will can, okay? We say I will be able to. All right. So if you would like to practice this, you can start with the question, what is something that I am doing that is new, okay? And so something that is new could be studying English, or I have a new job, or I got a new dog, I don't know. <laughs> and then usually, so then you can kind of say, so now because I'm, I've got something new, I am studying more, okay, or I... I am spending more time at my job. This is something new. I am exercising more when I walk with my dog, with my new dog. Okay. So these are things that might be new because your something has changed. Okay. And then you can talk about something that you regularly do. I, you know, I usually sleep until 8 a.m., but now I wake up earlier to study English, okay? I um, often... Um, let's see, I often eat dinner at 6 p.m. And but now with my new job, I eat later because I work later. OK, so these are things that are changing. Um, OK, and let's see something else about my dog. I how about this? I used to. Um, take a nap. Let's see, I like to sleep. I'm tired today. <laughs> I used to take a nap after lunch, but now I walk my dog after I eat. Okay. So you can see that these are things that are happening now and that are new. Okay. So we can put the color. I think that's this color. And these are things that are regular things but maybe are different okay so we can make that that color see how different those are okay so if you would like to practice with this activity i think it's a really good example so you can start with something that is new okay and um and then write out a couple of just example sentences and then you can combine that into something like this where you're adding all of the sentences together and, and then using some adverbs as well. And if you would like to send that to me, I would love to read it. And, um, and if you have any questions, we could work on it together. Um, okay. All right, if you wanna just go ahead and take a screenshot of that, you should do that. Um, okay. 
So um, our, we're going kind of quickly today, but I know you guys are so smart and you can reach out to me if you have questions. So let's just do a quick um, review on this because hopefully this is a review for you guys um, on the past tense and let's compare it to past progressive. So first of all, um, when we think about, let's see, where are my markers? Oh, there. When we think about when we use these tenses, let's make our little chart, okay? So simple past tense, um, simple past tense. We have a lot of past tenses, but the simple past, okay? We um, are gonna, let's make our little line, okay? This is our time. And this is now, obviously this is the future and this is the past. Okay, so simple past is something that happened in the past before today and that happened maybe one time but is now finished. So it's done, okay? So one time in the past and it's not happening anymore, all right? Past progressive um, happened in the past or it started in the past and it ended in the past. So this is now. So it happened, the past progressive was like this. It happened for that pe period of time. So for example, I, and we often use, um, well, well, we'll hang on just a second. <laughs> I was studying Spanish in Peru, okay? I was studying, um, oh, I didn't finish this correctly. So I have, so in the black, I've got the, the affirmative. And then in the green, I have the negative. I wasn't studying, okay? Okay, so maybe you're telling a story about being in Peru and you're like, somebody says, why were you in Peru? Why were you there? And you say, I was studying. So I started studying maybe in 2001 and I stopped studying in 2003. Okay. So I started here, I studied, and then I stopped. I was studying. Okay. Oftentimes when we use this tense, we discuss something that happened here. Like you can say, I was studying in Spanish. I was, excuse me, I was studying Spanish in Peru when I met my husband, okay? So then you say, I was studying Spanish in Peru when I met my husband, okay? So this is past progressive, and then this is actually simple past. So you had something happen, start, happen here, something happened in the middle, okay? So... I met dot, dot, dot. That happened when I was studying, okay? So the point here is obviously that we use past progressive to discuss something that started and stopped in the past, okay? I was walking when I saw a bird, okay? So you're talking about something. I was walking, I started walking, I was walking and walking and walking, and then it stopped maybe at the end of an hour, but in the middle, I saw a bird. So the saw is the simple present. Got it? Okay. I think we should all remember that. Um, let's talk about the, the, the negative. So we're going to simply write, here's our, um, our formula. We've got the past tense of to be, so your subject past tense of to be, I have this subject, past tense of to be, plus the verb study, plus ing, I was studying, okay? When you create the negative, you insert not after here, okay? I wasn't studying Spanish. I wasn't, or I was not. You can say either. To create the, um, the question, 
you're simply going to change the position of the subject and the form of to be. Were they studying Spanish? Were they studying Spanish? Okay, and then the WH question, when were they studying? Okay, when, were, so you're taking this were they, you're moving it over and you're using the when here, okay? So that's just the general overview. I think you guys probably know that pretty well. Um, and then the simple past tense, well, how do we form that? In the, in the regular form, we have the verb plus ed, right? And we know, because English is English, <laughs> that we have so many exceptions to that rule. Um, but, and actually study is one of them, because we change the y to i, and then we add the ed, okay? So i, in the simple past tense, i, we've got the subject, the verb with ed, and then the rest of your sentence. I studied Spanish in Peru. To make it negative, we use did not, okay? I didn't, you didn't, she didn't, we didn't, they didn't. So that one does not change. I didn't study Spanish. I didn't, okay? The question form, did she study Spanish? Did she? So you're changing the position of the subject and the form of do. This one, yeah, I would say did and didn't and the do forms are can be very tricky for people. So um, really spending some time on practicing using that do auxiliary because, um, you know, especially if you're a Spanish speaker, there's just no such thing. You, you create a sentence in the same way that you create um, an affirmative statement and you really just change the inflection of your voice. If you, I, I, and I'm not sure about other languages. Um, I studied some in the past, but um, generally um, this do, do in the present tense, did in the past tense, and then don't and didn't. Ah, you just have to practice it, okay? And then the WH question, when did they study Spanish? And that one, of course, needs a question mark. Okay, so we're going to practice this a little bit more in our next class. So class five we'll have on Tuesday. What is that? Tuesday the 11th? No, today's the 11th. Gosh, don't even ask me the date. Um, anyways, these are the two forms. Um, and what I'd like to do now is share the irregular past tense list. Actually, I just need a minute to find it. So go ahead while I'm looking for this. Let me see if I can quick find it. Um, yes, there it is. A1. Good, good. Okay. All right, this is a pretty long list, actually. It's got two pages. So when I put it here for you guys, I'd like for you to quick take a screenshot. And then I will also post it in our app. So if you don't get it here, let's see if I can get all of this on one page. Okay, um, so here's a very long list of um, irregular verbs in English, okay? So why don't you line that up good there, take a screenshot of that, and then down here. Okay, so what we're looking at is the base form of the verb, the simple past tense, and then the past participle. And when, let's see, when do we use that past participle, you guys? When we use the perfect tenses, okay? Um, so I... Um, I, here's the, a present tense. I am from Colombia. I was born in Colombia and I have been in Florida for 10 years. Okay. Have been, have been, that's where we use, that's the perfect tense. Okay. I have been. And then that's when you use the par participle, okay? Um, let's see. So this one is kind of tricky too, and it's very, very common. So I 
um, I come to work in my car. Yesterday, I came to work on the bus. And I have come to work in my car every day for five weeks. Okay, I have come. So there are rules, but there are clearly a lot of exceptions. Okay, so let's, I'll just move that up so you guys can screenshot that. Okay, and then there is one more page here. Okay, let me just line that up for you guys. So again, the base form, the simple past, and then the past participle. Sleep, slept, slept, sit, sat, sat, swim, swam, swum. So some of them just don't even make sense and you really just have to practice them, okay? So what I want you guys to do is, um, I do want you to practice these words. Um, and um, when we come back on Tuesday, let's take a deeper look at some of these and work on these irregular verbs together. Um, and maybe, you know, just kind of take it chunk by chunk, meaning like, you know, take 10 of them, practice, 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 take the next 10, two days later, practice, 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 and just kind of, you know, you know, the way that we learn these things is like, as a native speaker, of course, you learn them just by what sounds right. But to be honest, many native English speakers, at least in the United States, make mistakes on these all the time, especially that past participle tense. Um, I mean, all the time, you know, you'll hear, I, I hear adults say them incorrectly all the time. So um, I want you guys to be better than the average uh, American. So please, please do um, take some time to practice these and we'll do some exercises and maybe a little quiz next week to make sure that you've gotten them. But it this part really does require you to, you as the learner to do some work, okay? Remember teaching and learning is two ways. So um, there's me creating the space for you to learn and setting up the steps, um, but you are the one who has to do the work. And that is always how teaching is and how always how learning is. So learning is an active process. It's not only receptive, it's active. Um, so with that said, thank you all and have a wonderful day. And I will see you on Tuesday at 11 a.m. for the advanced class. Have a great week.